Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabados of Dalmar and together with my co-host Mark Kronich at Statewide News Service and jbiztechvelli.com. Yeah, Rabbi, you know, we have a lot of arts le leaders of the arts community in, on this show a lot of time. We had Marsha White from SPAC. We had Bob Belba from the Times Union Center. Now we're very, I'm very pleased to say that we have the head of the Egg, the executive director of the Egg, Peter Lesser with us today. And it's a real honor and a privilege to have you on the show. Well, it really well, is. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting Peter, me. Thanks. I've been a real fan of the Egg as an institution for many years. And I was just telling you my first interview uh, that I ever did was at the opening of the ribbon cutting of the Egg in March of 1978. And my first interview was with Nelson Rockefeller, who was there with Kitty Carlisle Hart. So I've, it's, it has very special meaning for me when I look at that. Peter, bowl. you weren't here, <laughs> but did you give a little history of the egg? I mean, it's such a funny shape. Uh, I don't know if funny is the right word, but a different uh, shape. Unusual, you know, yes. why they decided that way instead of a regular theater? Well, um, I think it's more of a. Um, uh, a legend, then anybody knows the, the, the true story, but we'll go with the legend because that's all we have. Um, as many of you know who have seen the Empire State Plaza, there are um, five buildings that are very tall and very straight and very rectangular. And um, supposedly, Governor Nelson A. Rockefeller at the time, um, who was the mastermind of this, um, was having breakfast with Wallace Harrison, who was the architect. And um, they're having breakfast. He said, you know, we've got all these buildings going up and down. Um, why don't we make something a little different? And he looked down at his table and mm -hmm. saw his coffee cup there. And he took his grapefruit and put it on top of the coffee cup and said, build me something that looks like that. That's a legend. Or <laughs> that, you know, we have to go with that's that the, over the story that's told. So, so we go so with it. So they don't that. call it and, a grapefruit. Uh, they call it a, <laughs> the that's egg. That's right. Well, you know, how it got the nickname of the egg, I think, is somewhat obvious, but I'm not sure how that actually ended up uh, starting and how it ended up sticking. But really, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that originally the egg wasn't designed to be a performing arts center. It really? was going to be where the joint sessions of uh, the legislature met. Um, and mm -hmm. for reasons unbeknownst to me, uh, midstream they decided that they didn't need that after all. And they said, well, now what do we do with this? And someone said, how about a performing arts center? But part of that is, um, you know, the shape already was designed. And, yeah. um, you know, the idea was there. I, I, believe, I don't believe the top was yet on. But then they had to build all of the, uh, the fly floor and all of the uh, theatrical systems and sort of... Um, Retrofit it to what yeah, you Yeah, shoehorn them in to some degree because uh -huh. it wasn't a part of the original... Um, design. Well, um, and that's one of the reasons I think it took 12 years to complete. It was started <laughs> in 66 and was, and you were at the ribbon cutting at 78. So it was hopefully worth the wait. Because, well, it's, to, I just, because it's round, are the acoustics better? I mean, I don't uh, know anything about no, sound. No, uh, the, the, um, the roundness has nothing to do um, with the acoustics, I don't believe. Um, what it does, um, well, it depends on what you're defining of good acoustics are. It's a very <clears throat> it was originally designed for speaking, and it works really well for that. Um, we have basically two amphitheater-style stages. One has 440 seats, originally was 500, and one is 980, originally 1,000, just due to some modifications. And um, um, so anyway, they work really well for that. As far as acoustics, as far as like a concert hall acoustics, they don't have um, very remarkable acoustics. However, um, with the right... Uh, sound system and a well-designed sound system, which we're lucky enough to have in both rooms, it works for just about everything. Well, uh, a couple of things. One is your previous job before you came to the Egg was at Detroit Music Hall. That's correct. And, you know, so you, that's phenomenal Good. acoustics. Yeah, that's, and that's it's a, perfect. So when you come from there to the Egg, nothing would equal the Detroit Right, and they're Music really, Hall, it's so. just really a totally different type of thing. Like right. Detroit Savings Bank Music Hall, you're right, it's <laughs> world renowned for its natural acoustics, which means you can listen to a string quartet or a string orchestra, and it's like being in um, acoustic heaven. Right. Um, on, on the flip side, though, the problem that, um, that we always had there, and they continue to, um, to try to address, is when you start to amplify in a space like that because the acoustics are what you would say reverberant, which means that there's a lot of natural reverb, um, then it can start working against you. On the flip side, at the egg, hearing a string quartet is unremarkable because <laughs> it's what we call a very dry room, so it doesn't resonate at all. But again, we have a blues rock band in there, um, and we can have amplification, and it takes really well to it. So 
We're lucky to have both venues in our community, actually. Now, on your website, on For the Egg, it says the walls are Swiss pear wood veneer. It's true. Now, I also, and I, and I also, another folklore, another legend, is that the egg, there's only one other version of this um, structure, and that, I think, is in, like, Norway or Sweden. In the roundness, the roundness of it, And the actual structure of it was from Norway or Sweden, and it's the only other place in the world that there's a there's structure like that. But there's only two, and that's what I've been told from yeah. day um, I, one. Yeah, I'm not so. familiar with that. There has been, and this is a very recently, they built a, a, a round concert hall, more of an oblong, and it looks a lot more like an egg, and they call it the egg in China. China. And there is an egg in China as well. I'm not familiar with this one. No. Now, there are no <coughs> virtually no straight lines or harsh corners inside the egg. It's all, the, uh, the walls yeah. along the edge curve upward to meet gently concave ceiling light for celestial effect. Exactly. In all of the public spaces, that's true. Okay. Um, you know, and even the, uh, a couple of the elevators around just to yeah, keep with right. the system. So, um, so it is unusual in that way. Um, if you look at uh, photos, um, or if you come obviously live um, to our lobby outside the Kitty Carlisle Heart Theater, you'll see that too. It's a, um, it's a... Uh, uh, arc-shaped room and and the walls on the outside of the same wall that you see that you see on the inside to some degree That's true. And yes. I've wanted to always climb up <laughs> yeah. Has anyone yeah. ever climbed up? I got about halfway <coughs> one time, but <laughs> Mara, you're not a theater, right? I like climbing. Yeah, but another yeah. thing with the history. Why is it called the Kitty Carlisle? What is connection to her that sure. she has a oh. whole hall named after her? Well, yeah, um, well originally um, the, the, the theaters weren't named anything except really the large theater in the studio Small theater. theater. <laughs> um, and then I believe it was in the um, late 80s, um, they, they decided that um, they would um, name the theaters. Uh, the Kitty Carlisle Hart Theater, as well, you said, is our larger. Head, she was the head of the Council on the Arts. Right. And, and she has a long history in theater. She was in a Marx Brothers movie, and she was also always pitching for the arts in New York State. She would bring up Tony Randall and other stars to lobby for a lobby day that we don't really have anymore at this point. Yes. You know, but I remember all those stars that she brought up, had pictures taken with them, and I mean, it was just amazing what you yeah. have up here. And, and then, of course, you had a Senator Roy Goodman from Manhattan, who was always a big pal of Kitty Carlisle Hart, and it was just, uh, you know, the Republicans in the Senate really supported it. As, yes, you know the funding for the for the egg, and it was all Kitty that really moved it along. So I think that's a big reason why she was chosen, because you know she was the mistress of ceremonies at the ribbon cutting, and she was uh, there all the she way was through. She was an advocate. She for was the there arts. all the way through. Never, you know, that's where her passion, her heart is. But the other theater is named after a Jewish guy named Lou Swire. Mm. <laughs> it's the Jewish view. We got to bring yeah. this in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, Lou Swire. <laughs> yeah, and Lewis has more of a, um, and not that um, that Kitty Carlisle Hart didn't have someone, but she was really a New York City gal. Um, but like you said, she was head of the Council of the Arts when um, the egg was being envisioned and as a performing arts center. So um, you know they decided that they would name that theater after her, and then uh, Lou Swire is just a great um, arts advocate, um, and he's just you know there's a building named after him at the Saratoga Performing Arts Center as well, right. and um, again so that's with the local connections. So now we have the Lewis Swire Theater and the Kitty Carlisle Hart. And theater. Ed Swire is his brother. I Ed Swire is is his son. Son. Yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. Ed Swire owns Stuyvesant Plaza. Right. Oh, really? and, and is also uh, was on our board for many years oh, okay. and is also continues to support us very generously. That's right. Okay, so let's get on with the funding. What's your budget? <laughs> Since you're talking you about... You have to talk support, money over here. What's your um, f budget right now these days? Um, our annual budget r runs anywhere from uh, one and a half to two million dollars, depending okay. on the year. I mean, um, and that is... Um, it just varies due to programming. It does to what type of outside funding that we have, what type of projects uh -huh. that we have. It's so on the average about like say 1.7, 1.8 million. And that's, for the, total. that's okay. for the that's for the performers also. That's included everything. How much you have to pay for a performer? Exactly. Yeah, that's our total budget. And, and that's budget. what it was in 2010, 2011 was two million. Yes. So it had, in five years, it really has. A um, yeah, move. we went down a little bit uh, right around the, just past that time, and now we're we're back up a little so bit as well. So how it, much of that is from the state budget? Um, the state budget, it's about ten percent. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I'm and, and what, you, that's yeah. I mean, that the originally that the the funding was was a lot higher. 
um, and then oh, yeah. over, yeah, quite a bit higher actually. That's right. Um, but over the years, um, you know, due to various reasons, um, you know, they've had to cut back or they've wanted to cut is back. Is that across the board, Mark? Again, Mark's a report on the <laughs> rabbi. I'm just saying, is that across? I mean, is that specifically no, is, for the I mean, algorithm they, they across? No, they did the same thing with the State University of New York. That's why when you see University of Albany in big letters yeah. and you see State University of New York in very small letters, because there's only 15% of the University of Albany budget is state money. The 85% oh, yeah. is from private funds. So the, so the, the uh, sending a message that the fewer dollars coming from the state, yeah, the smaller the letters right. are going to be that right. say State University right. of New York. And, right. uh, but, but, you know, you're doing, you, you have, everyone is out there ask, with their hands out asking for money oh, for the arts. Mm -hmm. and, and the state really should be supporting this more. I mean, how do you find another Roy Goodman or find someone in the legislature who could really be that advocate? Well, um, you continue to just try to do a good job and try to get people's attention. And then, um, you know, by design, you also look for alternate sources of revenue. Is that well, your job to look for, like, loose wires? I mean, I know he's not he passed away, but people in the community that will support you, sure. and that's your job really a lot? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's various. I mean, most of our revenue is from what we call earned revenue, which is from ticket sales. Um, which is from, um, we also sublet the theaters and the meeting spaces to other organizations and we're able to gain some revenue through that as well. Um, we should not, um, and it wouldn't be fair for us to say what we do get, a, the, the amount, although it may seem smaller than you think it should be, of course, but um, it's still generous. And also, um, you know, we, we also get, um, you know, some great support and maintenance support. So it should be clear that our organization is a not-for-profit organization. Right. Um, that was formed specifically to manage the performing arts spaces at the Egg, but the building itself is owned by New York State, mm -hmm. and we, in turn, um, really we we pay the Office of General Services a annual maintenance fee, and they take care of things for us. And how us. much is that? The annual maintenance fee to the state? Um, it's just over a hundred thousand dollars that we pay them. Over a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could get that reduced if you if the state's reducing your income. Maybe what you pay out to the state well, should be reduced you know, also. One and hand doesn't feed the other. <laughs> I like the way you think, Mark. <laughs> but um, you know, as it would have it, actually, that that amount has been going up. I, I, um, and, but of course, their cost for doing business is going up as well. And at the end of the day, um, you know what it does is it, um, you know, um, encourages us to find alternate sources of income to be, um, uh, you know, more, more uh, inventive yeah. and and creative. But you don't have a development. You have eleven staff members, and you don't have a development director. Yes, that, that's part of my job. That's uh, part development of Development and marketing and, um, and programming is pretty much the things that I take care of. Okay. Well, is it yeah. difficult, though? I mean, because like Mark said at the beginning, we have many um, people in charge, executive directors of many of the arts. But really, like you're saying, you have a fairly small hall, 1,500 compared to maybe Proctor's or surely the Times Union. Sure. Does that get difficult to bring in the re you know, five-star acts? Well, we bring in um, five-star acts. They're just not, you probably haven't heard of them yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously, I mean, what, you know, it's everything's based on business. And um, yeah, the type of artists that perform for us are artists that are um, typically emerging or sometimes um, they were, maybe they did play at SPAC at one point and now they're at a point in their career where they can play for a more intimate um, audience. So obviously, um, you know, you go with the size that you have, and again, we're lucky to have various size venues in the capital region. Did, so, did I read this right? That you had some sort of Beatle retrospective for their fiftieth anniversary? Yeah, uh, one of the programs that we do, um, in addition to just presenting um, the dance and music and family programming, um, is we have something called New York Living Legacy that we created uh, several years ago, and it's um, uh, when I say sporadic, it's not a regular um, uh, presentation, but we do it on occasion. And uh, we've done things like celebrating uh, the legacies of Leonard Bernstein or George Gershwin or Paul Taylor, the great choreographer, Martha Graham. Um, we took a little different approach. Obviously, the Beatles are from, not from New York, um, but from England. But the um, but there is a Liverpool, New York. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, uh, but the historic um, um, you know, arrival yes. in yes. February of, of 64 yeah. was a very New York event. And we thought that we would, because it was the 50th anniversary, and we happened to have a, an amazing band from New York that, uh, that, that recreates Beatles music on stage. We put it all together. We're lucky to have a Beatles uh, ethnomusicologist um, just a few miles down the road at Skidmore College, Gordon uh -huh. Thompson. 
And um, so what we do with these living legacy uh, projects is we have concerts at the egg, but they're supported by community outreach events. And uh, Professor Thompson went out to various, uh, mostly libraries, <clears throat> but some other community centers as well, and talked about, we put together a program talking about the Beatles' um, arrival in New York, what led up to that, the importance of it, why New York. Um, you know, it's a multimedia uh, presentation. And um, it's a good way for us to get out into mm -hmm. the community, people to get to know us, see the significance of New York and performing arts, and they come with our mm -hmm. hope that then they will arrive at the egg at the end of the week to see some live arts. You know, I, I have to tell you, talk about live art. And uh, in 1980, there was the State Democratic Convention was held at the egg. And I remember there was a U.S. Senate uh, you know, Demo uh, primary, you know, they had a, you know, it, I think it was like John Lindsay and Bess Meyerson and, you know, two other people. They all got 25% of the vote, but it was, uh, everyone was running around like in the back rooms and stuff. I mean, if, you, if I learned the back rooms of the egg based mm -hmm. on that, that convention and yeah. where the phone booths were at the time and things like right. that. Sure. But uh, you don't, but after that, there really hasn't been a now, state convention. Now, was that convention. at the egg or the convention center itself? No, no, that was at the, egg, the egg itself yeah, in okay. one of the theaters. Okay. And then they, you know, at the, I guess it really blossomed after 1980, but uh, no, in, in 90s they had it at the, 92 they had it at the convention center. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a but small I think, venue again, can they fit a yeah, thousand? Yeah, the Democrats in 1980 were not a small group, but mm -hmm. there's only so many conventioneers that, you know, are entitled to be there as a, at the convention. Sure. So, you know, what, what gives with not having more political, I mean, you have lobbyists have their convent, have their receptions at the egg in the lobby, yeah, but we do, we do have some. What's going on with the political side? Do you not want a convention, a political convention there? Is it too small? Um, again, we're, um, you know, our main focus is performing arts, yeah. so we're not going. Well, that's, they're performers, if anything yeah. else. These <laughs> politicians, um, they do perform. Yes, yes. So, so we're not actively seeking, <laughs> it's a different um, venue. <laughs> you know, seeking these types of events particularly, although we certainly welcome them and happy to. I mean, the governor does his budget address uh, almost the, every year at the Egg or at governor. the convention center. Yeah. No, his budget, oh, budget address, address is at the, at the, at the Heart Theater. That's right. The budget um, and address, Governor that's Cuomo and, and yes. Governor Pataki also uh, um, did it there. So, and, and they've done a lot of their uh, award ceremonies and their economic development that's right. uh, and projects the, and there. And the state of the state university. Uh, that's Nancy right, Zimper and actually in our smaller well. theater. So yeah. it does get yeah. used for a lot of uh, more official state business. But again, yeah. what we're... You know, what our organization was specifically oh, created for was for performing arts. But again, just luckily, sure, a, yeah. <laughs> um, but again, so to answer your question, why? Yeah. What do you, now looking to the future, what do you think is going to be the role of the egg? I mean, the convention center is not in your purview, is that correct? That's correct. So what do you think the role of the egg will be once the, that downtown convention center is built and they make the connections between the TU center and the convention center. Yeah. Uh, are you going to get more acts? Are you going to be able to see more revenue coming into the egg? The um, well, I think that that's everybody's um, hope. Um, you know, we're, it's uh, preliminary now. There's a committee that's been formed um, that includes ourselves and representatives of the um, uh, Empire State Convention Center, the current convention center, and the um, Times Union Center, right. and the Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau, and then, of course, the new uh, convention center. And uh, we've just started, we just had our meeting first, uh, a few weeks ago, we're having another one um, next week. And uh, to talk about, um, you know, how we can make sure that it's um, easy for people who are planning an event to be able to use all the spaces if they need them. And it's really just expanding on what's happening already because there, uh, many times there's an Empire State Plaza convention and they're using um, our theaters or they're using some of our... Um, display space or, or reception space. So I think this will just expand that a little bit and I think it'll be a little bit more formalized because they're obviously going to really be going out and looking for some larger conventions now that they have the space to do it. And, and you have a 16 member board, is that right? Yes, we can have up to 16 members. You have more board members than you have staff. Um, yeah, at this point, that's very <laughs> true. I mean, we, we have a lot of staff that we call our per diem. So they're, they're, they're hired for, to, um, to work the performances, but the full-time staff is about seven. And yep. it's about seven? Seven, seven people. So oh, I have a convention 11. center. Yeah. Can, says, you, 
Okay. Can you, you know, like work off the convention center? Let's say some of the convention center. You say, well, Saturday night, come for a performance. You know, I we mean, do. Um, you know, that kind of idea <clears throat> that you know, hey, you want some entertainment? So you know, they're having right. a convention, some business. <clears throat> hey, come on, Saturday night, come on. Exactly. Come on we we try to do that. What we find though um, is many of these conventions are really, really self-contained. Because we've tried that a few times. We've had some, what we thought were real ringers for that. But what we find is a lot of them, they plan out. They have a dinner, and then they have a reception, every, every and then they have their own planned. concert. And um, sometimes it's hard to add on, but the hope is with this pre-planning, and there will be enough notice that potentially we can yeah, come on drop over. something we'll in part of that it. will yeah, be mutually smart. beneficial. And, um, and you, they are looking at ways that they really can do that. Really, I know that. we have people for the convention center, the county officials, and they are hoping to expand Mm -hmm. you no, know, not just for themselves, but the whole of Albany should exactly. really benefit from mm -hmm. it, not just one little containment. So that's what I'm thinking, you know, that you can work yeah. with so, them. So that's you're looking at increased rental business from this new convention center? That, that certainly the, the hope that there will be uh, more opportunities and that they will need. And again... But you're not budgeting for it just yet. Oh, no, because they no. won't open for two years. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And, um, you know, we'll, again, wait and see how that goes. But, um, again, I think the main thing is that they're looking at it in a proactive way. They're not waiting until it's built and saying, now what do we do? Because now they have to start going after convention business now because a lot sure. of people plan two, three, four, you know, five I'm trying to put two and two together because I did go this past winter to the Andy Statman, very Jewish. Maybe it's good for everyone, clarinet is so... Just appreciate putting in some Jewish entertainment. I mean, even though it's universal, everybody would mm -hmm. like him. But, mm -hmm. you know, and then we know that there's going to be a kosher restaurant or a kosher facility. So maybe a kosher facility, a convention center, a little more Jewish entertainment. And the people in the capital district, the Jewish people, but everybody will uh, benefit also. So. Definitely, yeah. And we try to be as diverse as we can and um, serve various uh, people's interests. So. Well, I know, like, through Brooklyn Day and I know a couple of other receptions, basically whoever is renting the hall calls up Kosher Price Chopper, gets some pre-made platters because they know the speaker is going, the speaker of the assembly is going to be there. Sure. So they have kosher food, but uh -huh. there's really no other way of getting kosher food at the egg or at the convention center, right. which is an OGS operated facility. But I'm just saying that, you know, there should be more of options. Sure. In terms just of for the food. logistics, what is it? What, what, how will it be? A block away? I'm just trying to think. Uh, what, the uh, uh, convention yeah, center? Yeah. yeah. Oh, how yeah. Far? It's just um, one block. Yeah. You, won't, you, you won't even know because there are paths. They're going that, to make they're a gonna path straight through the walkways. Yeah. Of walkways. Oh, so that makes it even easier. So you don't yeah. have to walk up the hill. You'll I just go know. up to a certain level on the convention center, walk across, and then make a right yeah, right into the egg. Yeah. So. Excellent. They're all right right together. Yeah, that's what I was saying, a block away. Yeah, exactly. It's about two blocks. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, how, how has the organization evolved over the past 14 years? Uh, uh, you know, how have you seen it evolve? Well, um, it mainly the, the biggest change really is when I came on, and that was by design. Um, we had a new uh, chairman of the board who was very interested in seeing the egg become more active. And um, as you said, I was at the, the music hall in Troy, and someone was keeping their eye on me over there, and they thought maybe that I can make a difference over at the egg. And, um, you know, we really did. We, we did a, you know, a strategic plan and, and met and talked about ways that we can, um, you know, uh, support um, or find support from, you know, the local community from Albany and Schenectady, Troy, Saratoga and so forth, and then build on that. Um, we also wanted to make sure that since we are getting state dollars that we were not just serving the local area. Um, and then we could expand. And one of the things that we've done is we are the um, administrative arm of the what's called the New York State Presenters Network, which is a consortium of about 150 performing arts presenters across New York State. And we coordinate all the activities. We have a, a conference that we do in, in October. We've done some symposiums in the summer. Uh, we also administer a grant which provides funding to presenters who are bringing in um, New York State performing artists to perform in their venues. So we're very proud of that. And, and, and again, a way of using, um, you know, leveraging the, the, state, the state money that we do get to serve as many um, artists and presenters throughout the state instead of, you know, because that's, you know, 
it's hard to attract, although we do certainly get audiences from, um, from pretty far away, but for the most part, we're serving the local community. And uh, it's sort of like the musical version or the performing arts version of Taste New York. I mean, now you have performed New York, maybe. You can right, exactly. label it somehow. But I want to just go over, because on your website, it says that you have six genres that you that the theater is set up for or mm -hmm. that your mission is. It's comedy, dance, family, film, music, and theater. Mm -hmm. So uh, how much of that, how much of those are not, a, not focused on as much? Or how about children's performances? I mean, sure. what do you? Um, as it turns out, our, our main thrust is music. Yeah. The reason for that is because that's what people seem to like to go to the most. And there's so many different styles that can be, um, you know, that work well in the size theaters that we have. So our music program is really um, the one that you'll see the most of. Uh, the second is dance. Um, we're really one of the few upstate um, uh, performing arts centers that still presents uh, modern dance. And you're on the a home of the basis. Ellen Sinopoli Dance Company. We're, yeah, we have a resident <laughs> dance company. It's been there for uh, for many years. Yes. And. Um, and, uh, and family performances. And that's really what more encompasses our theater okay. presentations. So you don't do live theater, pretty um, much? We no. really yeah. have, we've tried. We've taken a few stabs at it, and we've just have found it very difficult to find success. I think part of the reason for that, um, well, I know part of the reason for that, <laughs> is there's not a lot of touring theater for small venues that is of the type of quality that we would feel that well, we'd like if, to present. If it was a joint session of the legislature at the Egg, like they originally thought, maybe you'd have political theater. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and that's usually what's the most dramatic anyway. That's right. right. <laughs> um, and then also, since we have you know the Capital Repertory Company and then some other, uh, and many, many community theater companies too, there, there's just not a great uh, demand for it. So we, we've done a few. We're, we're open to it. We've had some good uh, one-person performances that worked really well for us. Um, and the same thing with film. Um, again, the, um, uh, you know, the demand is there, but not so much for art film and that type of thing that would work for us and others are doing it really well. So you know, we're always trying to find our niche. We're not trying to you know, compete um, you know, with others who are doing things really well. We want to find things that aren't, be, aren't happening and, and try to do them to the best of our abilities. Are the board members more active now than, like you said, prior to your entry into this? Um, uh, I, I, I wouldn't really know that um, since, uh, you know, again, they're, they're more of a uh, governing board. They're all, um, one diff very big difference for us as a performing arts center is our um, board members are all appointed by elected officials. Yes. As opposed to um, your regular <laughs> performing, or non right. performing arts centers, people who they like the theater, Follow they like theory, music, yeah. and, and they're coming on because of their love for what you're doing already. Well, Whereas ours are, they're politically appointed or appointed by elected officials. So, um, they're, and, they're, and they're there not as a, necessarily as a fundraising entity. Oh, really? They're there um, really as an oversight to make sure that we are um, the boards, making good use of, of the money that's been provided by the state. Because the boards that I've been part of have been part of the fundraising arm. And, right. Uh, anyway. no, absolutely. And, and it's been a struggle for us and more and more now. Um, and and the, the governor as office, as they're appointing new members, there is more a sense of that they're trying to find people who have some experience with fundraising. So we've done a few very, very, very modest fundraisers in the past. And uh, basically, like you said, to get our hand out there with the rest of them, but we know it takes some time and to find the philanthropic community. Brian Petratus, yes. he's the chair. Yes, he's the chair. And what's his background? What, who is well, he? Well, he's, 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 um, he's the, the chair, um, he, he's officially the acting chair, but he's been doing it for as long. Um, the governor always appoints the chair, and the governor's uh, appointment um, unfortunately was unable to remain. Who was that? Um, his name is Neil Davidoff. Okay. And, um, well, he was local from Albany. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. And he was actually a representative from the Office of General Services uh -huh. um, before. And then he retired, and he was on our board as, as a liaison. And then when he retired, they invited him to be chair. And he was for a number of years. And, um, and then he found, due to some family commitments, that he needed to resign. Mm -hmm. And he even stayed um, for two years past the time he resigned. Because 
um, the way you're appointed, even if you resign, you have to stay until someone uh, until another uh, chairman is chosen. Well, it's interesting because this chair, Brian Petraeus, is the uh, speaker's appointee. Exactly. So he's always acted um, as the um, uh, as the, the vice chair, or if you will. Yeah. And because of uh, various circumstances, I believe this is his third or fourth time serving as acting chair because of the. Mm -hmm. time. And, but I believe this is the longest. So we're hoping that the governor, um, they're taking their time, the governor's appointments office, but they'll find a, an active uh, chair who's very enthusiastic about any, the egg and the arts. Are there any uh, openings, uh, vacancies? Yes, that, there are. There's several vacancies still, yeah. Okay, so the list that I have of the 16 board members, they might not be up to date. That's on your website? That's correct. Well, they're up to date. It's just there are probably some vacancies, so there could be more board members. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. so Tony Esposito is on your board? Yes, it's a government okay, board. Yes. He was part of the, uh, he was uh, ran Capital Cable Vision before That's it was Time Warner, yeah. mm -hmm. and he ran for State Senate, and I know Tony very well, yes. so it's, mm -hmm. he's a good addition, you know. Oh, yeah. But he could go out there and do some good fundraising. Oh, yeah, him. no, he's been on the board, <laughs> um, he's been on the board since, um, you know, 90, 1990 or, or before, I think, so. So is the recession over? For you, I mean, are you? Can you? Re, are you recovering? Well, from you the know, I, 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 you know, my, my initial answer is, you know, yes. I think it's more. I mean, the recession for us um, was a, a double blow because um, at the same time of the recession is when we got our, a very, very large cut in funding from the state. Um, and like I said, I mean, it takes no matter what, um, it takes time to uh, rewrite the ship, and you can't just, you know. Wake up one day and have your funding cut 70%, and the next day everything's okay. Entertainment's probably one of the first things that people cut when it's a recession. I yeah, mean. people, and again, a lot of times that, you know, and it's also a lot of it ha is reaction as well. So you may not find it right away, and then, and then it may take you a while to bounce back. But again, we changed the way that we approach certain things for practicalities purposes, um, for the amount of funding that we have too. So, um, so I think all of those things working together, the fact that people are more confident in the economy um, and um, they're going out more, um, and that we found a different way well, to Peter, do business. Well, Peter, we'll end up on a good note, and yes, we want to give yes. you a blessing that uh, thank you. you should grow <laughs> and to be prosperous and expand and something, a real jewel in the Capital District. I mean, for the small community that Albany is, I mean, we have so many great uh, venues. Our venues that people really rival bigger cities, and you're one of them in the egg, and therefore we want to wish you much success and whatever you're doing in expansion and growing, and do it with good health. All the best, yes. Thank you very much.